My name is Perry Lally. I am one of the senior product owners for George.com, uh, based out in the United Kingdom, uh, more specifically in Leicester. I know some of you guys may have heard of Leicester. Uh, we are honoured to have uh, Japanese international Shinji Okazaki representing our city, uh, which, is, which is wonderful. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how George.com have embraced a mobile-first approach, putting everything that you've heard today into context, uh, into a real-life scenario. Uh, this will include our initial problem statement, some data to back that up, uh, the adoption of AMP, and actually some of the problems that we faced on the way, because not everything is, uh, is rosy. So out of interest, who here knows who Walmart is? Hands up. Keep your hands up if you know who Asda are. And then finally, George.com. So we went down every time, as expected. But hopefully, after the next slide, uh, everybody will know a little bit about George.com. So we were founded in 1990 by a man called George Davis. Uh, he also founded UK retailer Next, whom some of you may have heard of. Uh, so I've got the clicker in my pocket. So in 1999, Walmart acquired Asda to invest into the UK market, which actually included George.com fashion and home branding. Then. In 2008, the George.com website went online and fully transactional, which is currently equating to 10% of total revenue, which is fairly significant. As you can see, we have 540 stores in the United Kingdom, of which George Clothing and Home is present in every single one of them. We are currently live in 26 countries across Europe, and we have plans this year to launch our Rest of the World project, which will see us go into over 70 countries worldwide, planning the takeover. So, there's been a lot of change in the last 11 years since we launched online. Specifically, the biggest change that we have seen is customers visiting from their, mobile, from their desktop devices to their mobile devices. So the huge shift in e-commerce puts mobile at the top of the game. And this slide behind me really brings that to life. This is the George.com trending traffic over the last four years. So our customers are mobile, and that means that we must be mobile too. To do this, we had to focus on three key things. First of all, we had to shift our colleague mindset. So colleagues are sat at their desks every day working on their laptops, looking at the desktop site, because this is what's built into their brains. This is the easiest thing to do. But our customers are not doing that. We needed to encourage our colleagues to get their personal phones out of their pockets at work, check the mobile website, test the mobile website to make sure that it is working for the customer. There was still the traditional awkward feeling of colleagues getting their personal device out at work because maybe their manager would think that they're texting or WhatsApping or not doing what they should. And we needed to break this barrier. We needed to shift the colleague mindset to embrace a mobile first approach. Secondly, the adaptive website. So we actually launched our desktop site onto the mobile phones. There's not enough real estate for the customers to navigate or use it. It's a terrible experience and that needed changing. So with that, we launched our mobile-friendly adaptive website, which today is our PWA. And then finally, and last but not least, site speed. So it's all well and good having a great user experience on mobile, the best in the whole world. But if it takes 10 seconds to load, what's the point? Customers can do a lot of things in 10 seconds. They can go and put the kettle on. They can start to read a book. One thing they will not do is wait for your web, web page to load. They'll simply go elsewhere. They can click into the URL bar, search for another brand, and off they are into another shop. So four years ago, our site was loading at eight seconds. Horrendous. Uh, and four years on, after 20% of our total capacity investment into site speed, we were loading at two seconds, which was a huge achievement for us. But people ask why. The board, the managers, why invest so much time, so much money into site speed? Why is it so important? Well, to put it simply, customers expect, customers demand a fast loading website. Or as I mentioned, that it's so easy for them to go elsewhere, they will do that, they will leave. We discovered on George.com that one second of site speed could be worth up to 5% of revenue for your business. This is an opportunity we simply cannot miss. So in summary, speed is king. So we are now loading at two seconds on average, 
We've optimized as much as we possibly can without stripping away functionality, without making our images one pixel, so they can't even be seen. We needed something else. AMP was the next logical step for us. We were the first major retailer in the United Kingdom to launch AMP on our site. We looked at AMP as a way to complement our mobile website, to increase our page load time, to give customers the experience that they deserve. But the question was, was this the right thing to do? There was no research available for us of other retailers who had um, adapted AMP onto their website. So we really needed to be bold. We needed to take a risk and go for it. So we launched a two-month experiment to measure a guaranteed fast first impression from, George, from Google search results to George.com. We launched 250,000 AMP pages. We, we were certainly bold. We have our home page, category landing page, product listings page, and category listings pages uh, that we're seeing AMP. It was critical the AMP pages had feature parity with a non-AMP site. In no way were we going to compromise our user experience for site speed. We set out to do both, world-class speed and world-class functionality. In order to do this, we required a couple of AMP components, as you've heard about today, such as AMP Bind to create our interactive color and size selectors, as you can see on the slide behind me, and also AMP List to load dynamic prices and determine product availability. But to power AMP List, we needed an API and a system to manage the AMP cache to ensure that our products prices, and availability were always correct in the AMP cache to avoid a mismatch from our site and the Canonical. So we turned to Want Mobile, our AMP partner, for assistance here. And a special shout out to Madison and Rob, who are here in the audience today. Please talk to them if you have the time. They are great guys. So several times per day, the George CMS pushes product data into the Want Mobile platform. The data is used in populating AMP templates and in the API that powers the AMP list components. The WAMP system manages the AMP cache using Google's AMP Update API when necessary to ensure that fresh AMP pages are displayed to our customers. When customers add to cart, perform a search, or log in, the AMP pages integrate with the existing George CMS to handle that transaction. From an analytics perspective, we are both using Adobe Analytics and Google Analytics which makes measurement relatively easy. But I'll come on to that soon. So what did we find out? We had our problem statement. We had a plan. We had the build complete. But what did we see? Well, speed made all the difference. Our users are both responding to and valuing speed, as I've mentioned earlier to you guys we saw 75% faster page loads across our AMP pages versus the canonicals, with the majority of pages loading in less than one second. This visual comparison brings that to life. So using web page test, we, we were able to measure the canonical on a 3G connection, loading visually complete in five seconds. The AMP page served from the Google cache is visually complete, ready to interact with in just one second at phenomenal speed. We also saw a 12% click-through rate improvement from Google search results. Customers are identifying and relating to the AMP icon in their journey. They know what it means, they know the page will load fast, and they're more likely to interact with it. However, with an increase in traffic, you're not necessarily guaranteed an increase in conversion. You're not guaranteed strong converting traffic. Therefore, you could expect an increase in bounce rate too. However, with AMP, we saw a 14% decrease in bounce rate, and that simply has to be put down to the speed of the pages. We saw a huge 56% increase in pages per visit for customers in their AMP journey. Customers who are on a mission, they know what they want to get, and they want it fast. If our search result is present in the customer search, and they interact, the chances have doubled for a customer likely to carry on shopping and browse more pages on your website. So I mentioned earlier that George.com were the first major retailer in the UK to enable AMP. We were also the first major retailer in the UK to turn off AMP. We saw great numbers 
m hugely in favor of AMP. However, the method of measurability was not ideal. Usually for new features or initiatives, A-B testing is the best approach. You A-B test to decide on the key metrics to see what is better, the control or the variant. However, you cannot A-B test AMP being enabled or disabled on any given page, meaning we were, able to, we were having to use the before and after approach to measure. George.com are seasonal. We see peaks throughout the year in different metrics. For example, uh, Easter or Christmas. But then there's also things that we do not plan for, such as uh, Love Island on TV or a tweet that's gone viral can really spike our metrics. So it was really hard to absolutely knuckle down what AMP did versus other growth around the business. So we decided to reverse test this. We measured before and after, but what about after, after? So we disabled AMP for four months for a fair test to split out those numbers to really determine what AMP did versus the natural growth of the business. So as you can see on the slides, the numbers were as expected, they flipped. We saw the increase with the online of AMP and we saw the decrease in our key metrics with the turn off of AMP. For example, a 6.6% .6 lower click through rate, 17% worse balance rate. The numbers made sense. And this is where our decision was made that AMP was successful for George.com. One of the challenges we faced are when the AMP pages are viewed, we are still on Google.com. We load Adobe Analytics using the native config, which loads the analytics scripts in an iframe. And the source of that iframe is Asda.com. Because the analytics scripts are running from Asda.com and we are on Google.com, Apple's intelligent tracking prevention considers our analytics a third party and disregards cookies for new users. So because our analytics tracking cookies do not stick, in Adobe, our new iOS users show an artificial 100% bounce rate. Many other metrics are correct, but for metrics such as bounce rate, we only look at Android users. However, Google Analytics has solved this problem with the AMP Client ID API. So we also use Google Analytics. This gives us two data sets to use and compare against each other. We are currently working on signed exchanges, and we're excited to see that technology move into production. Signed exchanges will allow our AMP pages to be served from the Google cache, while also retaining our URL in the URL bar, allowing our analytics and cookies to work correctly. So we had a problem. We had AMP. We had no AMP. What's next? George.com have just launched a React-based website and, so, and with a complete change in user experience. So now we've had the trial of switching off AMP. We want to re-enable AMP on our new website as soon as possible. And we're aiming to get 250,000 pages live by the end of June. But following that, the next logical step is for George to build a PWAMP, a great word. I don't know how that will translate. but so. Using AMP pages in our PWA is the best way to leverage our investment in AMP and leverage everything we've learned so far. The AMP pages, the AMP patterns, and the AMP way to guaranteeing speed. A unified, fast mobile experience for search results and main site. So I'm not expecting you all to remember everything I've said today, uh, but if you are going to take anything away, do not forget you do not give up functionality to gain speed. You want both. And also be brave. We have to take calculated risks to see the rewards. With AMP, it was a big risk, and our board were not too sure about it because there was no research. There was not a strong enough business case at that point. But we took the risk, and we saw the reward. So that's it from me. Thank you for listening. <laughs>